All right. Um, good morning, and uh, thank you very much for coming to our session. For this part, we will talk about adaptability API in Android devices. I'm Hak, a developer relation engineer in Android gaming team, and we will talk about uh, adaptability API. I'm Hak, and uh, I will talk with uh, Dohyun and Farhan. Yeah, hello, Ryan Kim, developer relation engineer. Is that? Yeah. My name is Farhan Hassan, and I'm a software engineer in the developer relations team at ARM. In this talk, we have three parts. I will talk about ADPF or Adaptability API itself, and Dohyun will talk about the uh, experience of the Unreal Engine um, Adaptability plugin, and Farham will talk about the uh, ARM's experience for Adaptability API. Okay, let's start. So, I'd like to introduce two APIs about Adaptability API. First one is uh, Performance Hint Manager API. Second one is Summer API. This one is a quick diagram of how Frequency Manager of Linux kernel works. Uh, it's called about uh, DBFS. And in Linux, CPU frequency is managed by the task load of moving average of the task load. It slowly ramp up the CPU frequency and slowly ramp down the frequency as well. That will take almost about 200 milliseconds, which is currently the less performance and the waste of energy here. And we, uh, we introduced the ADPF API. By using ADPF, the game can supply better signal to the kernel so that the CPU frequency can ramp up rapidly and can degrade rapidly as well. And also, the system knows the topology of the CPU, like a small core, which one is small core, which one is big core, so that uh, you don't have to use the CPU affinity anymore. The use of the performance, adapt uh, performance manager API is quite easy. Create a thread and uh, put the thread into thread group. And by using performance manager API, you can report the expected duration, duration of the task and the actual duration of the task. That's about it. And the system will react, uh, react by the signal <laughs> like uh, speed up the CPU frequency or slow down the CPU frequency or allocate thread into sufficient core like a small core or a middle core, a big core. Inside the Google application, we are already widely using this API like in the Chrome or YouTube and the Surface Fringe in Android OS. And they all get positive result by using Performance Heat Manager API. Another one is Summer API. By using Summer API, you can retrieve the status of the device, how much likely is the device is summer throttled. The API returns the value from 0 to 1. 0 is Value zero means that the device is not throttled at all, and one means the device is throttled heavily. And depending on the value, your game can adjust the workload dynamically. Like uh, if the device is throttled heavily, you can reduce the workload of the game so that eventually the game, the device, won't be throttled anymore. This kind of dynamic adjustment is uh, pretty uh, good for Android device gaming. The use of the Summer API is also simple. Call the API, or you can set the callback to the API, and you retrieve the value from 0 to 1 of the Summer throttling status, 
and your game can react to the signal accordingly. For the game engine support, most of the major game engines already support ADPF API. Like uh, in Unity, you can use adaptive performance framework, which already has uh, ADPF support. And we just released a plugin for Unreal Engine so that you can use a plugin for Unreal Engine. Also in Cocos Godot, we worked together to adapt ADPF in their engine. In Android 15, which is coming in later this year, we will add new API for ADPF, like a performance manager for GPU, and we will have some support API for thermal API, like uh, retrieving the threshold of the each of thermal throttling value, et cetera. And also we have better support of the CTS or B BTS in Android 15, so that uh, technically all of the devices that support Android 15 will have ADPF API enabled. Another example is uh, MediaTek MAGT framework which is uh, MediaTek's game framework. We worked together to adapt uh, ADPF in MAGT, and it showed quite positive result. They now, they can get a better frame rate while saving the energy for 26%, which is great. And uh, as a result, all of the MediaTek devices will support ADPF as well. All right, passing it to the Dohim. Thank you, Ak. Hello, my name is Doyeon. I will introduce ADPF on your plugin. It's similar to Unity Adaptive Performance. It provides the easiest way to use the ADPF in the Unreal Engine. The Unreal Engine plugin works like this flowchart. Every frame, the plugin tracks the time elapsed since the previous thermal check. If at least one second has passed, it reads the current temperature and determine if a change in graphic quality is necessary. If so, the plugin adjusts the setting accordingly. And every frame, it reports target and actual duration to the performance hint API. It boosts the CPU frequency or make a better scheduling if it need. When the plugin determines that a change in graphic quality is necessary, it utilizes Unreal Engine's scalability system. This system offers four levels, 0 to 3, which adjust setting like resolution, view distance, and other graphic settings. To illustrate the visual impact, I've included the cropped screenshot from the Onion Engine Sun Temple. Notice the le reduced resolution and lack of anti-aliasing effect at level zero. The plugin offers two ways to change graphic quality dynamically. The primary method using the summer headroom, while the secondary method utilizes the summer state. It is disabled by default. Summer headroom provides a floating point value, allowing more precious adjustment compared to the summer state. All that Android performance enabled is on your, on your configuration. You can change it the runtime. If you want to use the summer state, you can set it to two in all that Android performance changes qualities. The plugin utilizes two performance hint sessions, one to monitor the game thread and the other to track the rendering threads. For each session, it reports both the target frame duration and the actual frame duration. If the actual frame duration is longer than the target frame duration, it boosts CPU frequency or optimizes CPU tasking scheduling, and it improves the performance. If you'd like to try to ADPF on your plugin, 
you can download it using in the this show link. It is comparable with the Unreal Engine version 4.25 to 5.3, which is the latest engine version, and requires Android NDK API level 30 or higher. Installation following this standard, standard Unreal plugin process. Copy the plugin into your project plugin folder. Enable the plugin in the editor. Build and cook your project, that's all. The plugin will function on Android devices with API level 31 or higher. Additionally, the device must provide accurate value of the guest summer headroom API. Let's see how ADP app enhances the performance of actual game. I will integrate the plugin into NCSoft Linux W game. NCSoft Linux W is online role-playing game and its support multi-platform include the PC and Android. So it has high graphic qualities even in the Android environment as well. The graph illustrates the FPS and summer headroom over a 30-minute test of the Linux W. Learning on Pixel 6 device with high graphic quality setting, the game typically targets 30 FPS, but I use 60 FPS for this test to stress the device and evaluate ADPF's performance. Notice how the FPS drop after two minutes, eventually stabilize around 32 by the end of the test. Similarly, the summer headroom value is increased rapidly after launch the game and reach approximate 1.25 at the conclusion. Indicate it is on the summer throttling. After using ADPF with the onion scalability, the game demonstrates the significant improved FPS, averaging at 57. However, summer headroom value remains high at approximate 1.25 still, and the graphic quality quickly downgrade to zero within three minutes. Comparing this graph highlights this difference. While ADPF initially helped achieve the target FPS, the performance declined after 20 minutes, and the persistently high summer headroom indicate potential summer sorting. It requires investigation into plugin settings to potentially discover a more balanced configuration. Let's examine this graph, which showcases RigidW's built-in graphic quality setting. The game offers three levels, high, medium, and low. It utilizes high quality when the summer headroom remains below 0.8 and switch to the low quality when the headroom executes 1.0. As the graph illustrates, the system successfully maintains the target system FPS, while generally keeping the summer headroom value below 1.0, while occasionally spike above the 1.0 occur, but they are quickly changed to under 1.0. The results speak for the themselves. RigW is in-game setting over significant performance and summer management benefit or, and over a more generic solution like ADPF. It maintains the target 60 FPS for the entire test duration while keeps summer headroom is in check. This is likely due to the game-specific tailoring of its graphic options. Ensure smooth gameplay without device overheating. Linux W provides players to control over their visual qualities. It has three graphic quality level, adjust resolution, model detail, and texture quality, and slow rendering, shadow rendering, or other graphic options. Examine this in-game cropped screenshot to see visual difference between each settings. Notice particularly how the low quality settings sacrifice the resolution and modeling even the shadow is not visible in the low quality. Let's get started with the ADPF on your plugin. 
Remember to enable in-game graphic quality setting for the best result. Unlock the full potential of the ADPF Unreal plugin with this key step. Establish baseline. Before using the ADPF, slowly profile your game's performance. This data will serve a valuable benchmark for comparison after you implement the plugin. Harness Unreal Scalability. Experiment with the Unreal Scalability even if it offers only modest performance gain. This will help have performance benefit without much effort. Plurality in-game graphic settings optimize your in-game graphic quality level. These settings are thoroughly tailoring specified to your game content. Ensure smoother frame rate and better summer management. Next, Fahan will introduce ADPF in the ARM devices. Thank you, Hack uh, and Dokken. Uh, my name is Farhan, uh, and I'll be talking about uh, adaptive performance on ARM devices. For, for research purposes, we've developed a demo using Unreal Engine and uh, ADPF, where the idea was to investigate how, uh, how we can op optimize uh, game performance using ADPF. We monitor the thermal status using ADPF and adjust graphic qualities in the game engine accordingly. And the objective here is to allow users to play the game for longer without taking a hit at their gameplay experience and consuming too much power. Uh, we use the thermal state monitor and the thermal headroom APIs in ADPF to monitor thermal throttling and therefore adjust quality settings uh, such as shadow quality, view distance quality, ref reflection quality, et cetera, as the device starts to throttle. As we can see here, the adjustment is made at certain thresholds of thermal headroom and thermal statuses. As the thermal headroom starts to increase or the thermal status moves towards severe, the quality levels are, are dropped accordingly. In order to investigate how developers will use ADPF in practice, the quality settings mentioned earlier are the most useful tunables that a developer would typically use in their game projects that have different levels of graphical and computational intensities and would target a, a, a range of different devices. So a new higher end device would have a, a more intense computational workload it can handle, whereas an older device would have a more reasonable workload. ADPF can be used to help adapt the quality. Power consumption on devices was measured using the Profetto tool, and we looked at the power rail for this. We also took measurements on Pixel devices only for this talk, and this included the Pixel 8. A streamline from the ARM Performance Studio was also used to monitor thermal status and CPU and GPU usage. And informa information such as frame rate, thermal headroom, and temperature was collected through APIs for analysis. Now we're going to talk about power from the device you might be targeting for your game, and this means we need to talk about the CPUs in your mobile device. So in an ARM CPU chipset, you have a big, mid, and little cores. The little processors are designed for maximum power efficiency, while the big uh, processors are designed for maximum compute performance. This big little system adjusts to uh, periods of high processing intensity, such as those seen in mobile gaming and web browsing, et cetera, which alternate to longer periods of low processing intensity tasks. And then we have the mid cores, which will take on processes that might uh, lie between those two intensities. Now, ARM doesn't make games, but we have developed our own demo games, which are to research mobile graphics and uh, graphic uh, game technologies. And this year, we've tested adaptive performance uh, on one of them. So for this talk, we will be pre presenting results from Steel Arms. Now, Steel Arms has different levels of graphics intensities and a substantial CPU workload and it's been built to be like modern games, uh, model game behavior on mobile phones, and allow us to test how different technologies might work in a game on ARM devices. But before we proceed, let's have a look at how we put everything into place. So here's the stack. We have the ADPF APIs, which are the basis of this. On top of that, we have the uh, adaptive performance plugin in Unreal Engine. And then on top of that are the games, which in this case is Steel Arms. To see what the game looks like when uh, ADPF comes into play, 
Let's have a look at these two scenes. So can you tell what was turned down or changed with ADPF on? When, when throttling was imminent, effects were scaled down in steel arms. So it's hard to spot these reduction in, in post-processing uh, post and uh, visual effects, but this is something that the user will generally not notice while playing. This means that you can maintain most of your uh, visual experience for the, for the game player without taking a hit at the overall gameplay experience. You can also do this while maintaining your power performance uh, for the game and the battery life of the device. If you focus on the ropes, uh, the shoulder, the, the audience, you will see a quality drop on the right-hand side, which is with ADPF on. Now, these two images are showing the best and the worst qualities, and it gets to the lowest quality level gradually, hence the differences are not really noticeable while playing. But maintaining the high quality level you see on the left-hand side without ADPF will actually make the device uh, struggle as it throttles, which means it's going to affect gameplay experience. Again, if you notice the shoulders of the robots, the, the floor, the ropes, and the audience, the, the, it's quite unnoticeable when scaled down gradually, but it has a significant impact on performance. For that, for, for that let's have a look at some, some data now. So these are corresponding frame rate results from the playthrough on a Pixel 6 device. With ADPF off, you can see that the frame rate per second, frame rate drops to about half of what it normally should be. In comparison with ADPF on, the frame rates stay at normal, expected, or close to normal levels. And the thermal headroom remains just below one. So overall, we see a 57% improvement uh, in frame rate. And also, we maintain the thermal state at light instead of uh, severe, which is without ADPF. If we talk about performance, there's an overall 22% improvement in uh, GPU power consumption and 31% 30, less energy consumption per frame. So this means that ADPF will greatly improve the power consumption of your game, which means longer playtime for gamers and an improved battery life for the device the gamer is playing on. Now, remember the ARM CPU uh, I, cores I was talking about earlier? Here, the GPU, when adaptive performance is off, draws a significant amount of power. The big CPU core has power spikes consistent with the workload the GPU has, catching up with the amount of processing it's being asked to do. And in comparison with ADPF on, the big CPU core responds to throttling and brings down the overall uh, power consumption of all cores in the device. Next, we have the corresponding frame rates for the Pixel 8 device again. We see that with ADPF on, the frame rates stay at, again, normal expected levels with an approximately 35% improvement in frame rates overall. Thermal status will remain at light uh, as compared to moderate without ADPF. Temperatures stay within 40 degrees Celsius. And the uh, thermal headroom is held below one. For performance, Overall, a 47% uh, improvement in the GPU power consumption with ADPF on, and 25%, roughly 25% less energy consumption per frame. In conclusion, we've observed that ADPF is powerful. When used, it can significantly help improve the power consumption, maintain a lower device temperature, and a good frame rate for the game. Plus, it also allows developers to scale down without affecting the gameplay experience for the user. And both new and old devices can benefit from this, as it allows for optimizations on older devices too, without having to make the effort to do so uh, for older devices. That's all for now. Thank you. All right, uh, that's about it for our session. In summary, Balkan is a great API, and please try ADPF in your games. And for Q&A, we will be staying around here, so please ask us directly. And please send us a feedback by scanning this QR code. Thanks for coming.